Hey guys, what's going on? It's Colin with Tell You Out Here Today. And today I'm starting a new Photoshop series called Photoshop Training. Basically what I want to do is introduce any of my subscribers or anyone who watches our videos into Photoshop and give you guys a gallery that you can go look at if you ever need any tutorials on how to do something. So this will be the first of the series. If you're watching it, uh, you know, a couple months after it's been posted or something, you should go check out the playlist and see what all we have stacked up in there for you to watch and for your enjoyment. Um, but anyways, guys, let's go ahead and get right in. Um, today I'm going to be making a logo type thing um, in Photoshop CS5. Everything that I do is pretty much uh, translatable into any Photoshop. You know, uh, CS4 is fine, CS3 is also okay, so you should be set um, as far as what kind of software you have. Uh, but this is pretty much what we're going to be making. Uh, you, know, you know, of course, whatever text you want on there, but I just wanted to, to get this basic idea across. Alright, so to start out, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go download the uh, texture pack from, I have, I'm going to have a link, wow, <laughs> I'm going to have a link in the description that you can go download a texture from. Uh, what it is, is it's this texture that's right here, as you can see, this kind of speaker looking uh, metal wire fence, whatever you want to call it. Uh, basically, that's what you're going to need to download because it does not come in the standard Photoshop. Um, so that is completely free. Go ahead and go look at the link in the description to download that. Uh, moving on, let's go ahead and start up. So you're going to want to make a new layer. Um, I have mine on a transparent background just because I'm probably going to end up putting it over a video or something. So um, when you're finished, if you want to actually delete the background and save it as a PNG, you can do that as well. But right now, just go ahead and make your first layer. Um, you want to choose kind of like a gray, uh, grayish, you know, more of a darker gray than anything, but like a grayish black. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and grab your ellipse tool and you want to go ahead and make sort of an egg shaped ellipse you want it to be longer than it is wide if that makes sense so you go ahead and make it about like that now I have my own special way of doing this a lot of people would probably choose a different uh, way but this is kind of how I like to do it I don't know why make another layer and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this circle in half so um, you know think of it what you must but I like to grab my line tool and grab a completely different color nowhere near what th this color is and just make a line right down the middle of it, pretty much where our cut is going to be, and then kind of surround it so we have a box around that. Then what I like to do is I like to go from there, and I like to select all the layers and merge them together. So you can just uh, hold down shift and select all of them, merge them together. Grab your paint bucket tool and fill this in. Now what we can do is we can grab our magic eraser tool, and we can cut that off. Therefore we have a half of a circle. Now that may have been the longer step to do it, but that's how I know how to do it and uh, it seems easier to me that way. So once again, think of it what you must. Um, now what I'm going to do. This basically is going to be our texture. So go ahead and double click this, bring up your uh, blending options or your layer style or whatever you want to call it, and turn your texture on. Now yours is probably going to be some weird pattern like this go ahead and load that uh, it should be in here uh, under something like texture fill to or I don't remember exactly what it what it's called you might have to go to load load patterns and load that file wherever you saved it from so whenever you do I already have mine loaded here just go ahead and open this one kinda looks like a, a black net type thing there's a silver one as well that looks very similar to it but I like using this one and we're just gonna scale it down to make it look eh, that looks good right there so about 35 percent is what I put it at Next, we want to go ahead and make another layer, and actually go ahead and take this layer and drop it below the one that you just created. We pretty much want to replicate that gray that we originally had, so you can just go ahead and take the eyedropper tool and use that um, to, to make that layer once again, or that color, I'm sorry. Grab your ellipse tool, and go ahead and make this. It doesn't, you don't really have to make it on top of it, but uh, just make it so it'll fit behind it, and here's what I mean. See how I, I just made it and I kind of grabbed it and brought it behind it like that. Um, and you might have to play with the ellipse until you get it just perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and make one more here. I want mine to be a little bit, uh, you know, not so uh, along, I should say. I'm going to go ahead and grab this and move it behind there. All right, that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and do the the method that I showed you earlier on taking the colors and lines and the paint bucket tool and then cutting this half off so 
you guys will see me here in one second. Okay, we're back. Next thing we want to do is we want to grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle that kind of matches up with that circle that you just made. So I'm going to make it about this long. <laughs> My apologies. You also want to have it on the color, uh, the gray color that, that we previously chose. This, rect this rectangle is actually going to also go behind, uh, behind the texture that you made. All right. Once we do that, what we'll, we'll, next thing we're gonna do is we are going to combine the two layers of the. Um, go ahead and move these together. We're gonna go ahead and combine the two layers of the texture and the half circle, which are happen to be both half circles. But go ahead and shift and merge those layers together. Next, while you're highlighted on that layer, press Control T, and what that'll allow you to do is go into free transform mode. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this thing around. I apologize. Next, what you want to go, go ahead and do is duplicate this layer. Once you duplicate the layer, you can name it whatever you want or whatever. Go on ahead and press Control T, which will allow you to go into free transform mode. And I go on ahead and flip this layer around move it over here don't mess with the height any if you want to you can you know uh, make it longer or shorter whatever you want to do um, to the width but don't mess with the height because that'll affect the overall appearance of the shape okay the next thing we want to do is make a new layer on top of that and we're gonna go back to our original gray you can use the eyedropper tool as well for that and we pretty much want to start this box or this rectangle at the top of the metal texture that we made on the half circle and end at the very bottom of it. You might kind of have to just guess around a little bit, but uh, you should pretty much get the overall uh, overall appearance correct. I'm going to go ahead and take this, uh, apply this texture to it at 35%, the same as you did the other one. And mine is turned off right now, but if we turn it on, you can see that that pretty much gives the overall appearance that we're looking for here. Now, um, I personally don't actually like to keep these at you know full. You, know, you can see that's kind of a little bit overpowering how the metal is just like. Uh, so I like to turn the opacity down just a little bit, like so. And we can do the same with these. Just you can highlight those and work with both of them at one time. <laughs> I guess you can't. But what we can do is turn the opacity down. And then you can actually copy and paste the layer style. So you guys get the basic overrun of that. Next thing you can do, if you want to put some text on it, go on ahead and type in, you know, um, we can go up here at the very top. We can make a new layer, whatever color we want. <laughs> Just so happens to be pink. And type in, tell you how. And by the way, uh, for the crazy fonts that I get, I get them at dafont.com. You guys should go check them out. They have an excellent gallery of uh, various fonts that are very helpful if you're big into Photoshop. Uh, you can pretty much mess with some smoke here, get some pictures off of uh, Google Images, and, and alter those around quite a bit to get that little smoke effect that I had there. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Also, check out our gallery of Photoshop tutorials that I will have up in the future. So if you are viewing this, you know, any amount of time that after it was posted, go ahead and check uh, for more of those. Once again, this was Tell You How. I hope you guys had a great day, and thank you for viewing this video.